is this straight now? It looks crooked and it also looks like it's cutting my head off like right there. No? Okay, I'll take your word for it. Uh, hey, welcome to the Fireside Tattoo Podcast, the only tattoo podcast that starts with the word Fireside. That's probably true, wouldn't you say? Well, that's a safe bet. There's not another tattoo podcast that starts with Fireside. But we should probably put our research team on it just to be safe. Uh, I don't want to be spreading fake news or anything like that. Actually, you know, we come, we've been on the internet for a while now, and we come from the school of make up anything that you want to say in the whole world and say it on the internet with authority, with like, this is the fact. And then everyone goes like, oh, it sounds like that's probably the fact, right? And we've made our living doing that for five years now. So, uh, today's episode, um, I had, I had a thought, this is crazy. I had a thought and then, and then as this thought went along, I was like, man, this might be the most important element about being a tattooer. It might, this, this idea might be even more important than drawing, right? It's probably not more important than drawing, but it's up there. It's definitely something that we all battle and that we all have to deal with and that we don't talk enough about. So that's my teaser for this episode. I'm gonna start it with a story. So here's my story. What, here's my story. Um, I have been, oh, I don't know, the last three to five years, I've been using a Cheyenne tattoo machine. I was, I've been using the Cheyenne pen for the last couple of years. Before that, I was using the Cheyenne Thunder, and these are very lightweight machines. They're almost silent. They're very non-offensive. Uh, they feel like a paintbrush. I can listen to my music and the machine isn't noisy, it's not in my way, it doesn't like, uh, it's, it's very non-offensive. It's definitely like, it's a tattoo machine for the wine and cheese tattooer. I like, I've got a little glass of red wine, I've got some fine cheese, i got some of those fancy crackers that have the multigrains in them, I've got my classical music playing, and I've got my feather light machine that doesn't make any noise, all of my clients love it, and that's what I've been using for, for years now. And uh, I let a friend of mine talk me into buying a, uh, a Sidewinder, um, the, uh, Dan Cuban's Sidewinder machine, which everyone loves is a great liner. And so the thing about the Sidewinder, if you don't know it, or all of Dan Cuban's machines, is that they are rotary machines, but they feel and sound a lot like a traditional coil machine. And so I get this thing in the mail, and, um, and I was doing a tattoo, I was tattooing this girl's entire foot. And I was like, I'm excited to use this thing. So I hook it up, I get some tubes. I haven't used tradi- traditional like tubes and, and, and regular needles in a long time, but I set them up, put my rubber bands on it, got myself a clip cord, and, and I fired the thing up, and I'm feeling the armature bar trying to get used to it, and it felt like a freaking like machine gun, like a sledgehammer, just And it was intimidating, it was scary. And, and so I'm like getting ready to use it, and I felt butterflies in my stomach and so I quit on it I was like I can't do this so I'm like I put it to the side I got my Cheyenne back out and I did the tattoo but it did give me um, this feeling it reminded me of being a beginning tattooer again it reminded me of being like someone that was just getting into the field and being so hesitant to make that first mark because I didn't know what to expect out of it I didn't feel very confident there's my keyword for the night I did not feel very confident And then it occurred to me, I was like, oh man, you know, we spend so much time on this show encouraging people to explore other mediums, encouraging people to like explore in their own spitting, explore in their own mark making, uh, you know, pushing themselves artistically, pushing themselves technically. And it's like, man, it's so easy to forget that not everyone is super comfortable with a tattoo machine. Like sometimes people are just trying to get the confidence to make that mark and like be sure that it's in there. And so, um, so I realized a lot of times we're pretty off track, I think, with our audience, you know? We're like, um, where we're trying to encourage them to explore more, they're like, shit, dude, I'm just trying to figure out how to put in a line. And so, and so that just had me thinking, like, man, it does take a certain amount of confidence, a certain amount of almost ego, not almost ego, a certain amount of ego to like put a mark in the skin and be like, yep, that's where that mark goes. That's how that blend goes. This is the color I want right here. And, and the thing is, if you are not confident, the skin will exploit you. I mean, it will show everyone that you are not confident in that mark. You are not confident in that fill. You are not confident in that blend. There's no way to like trick people. You can trick people in other mediums. You can't trick people in tattoos. 
And so anyways, I was thinking about that um, after using that Sidewinder. And, and since then, I should say I've gotten used to it. I've used it on some other tattoos um, in some areas that weren't like hands and feet. And I love it. It is a, it's, it, it's like a beautiful lining machine, but it did take me some getting used to. Um, but that's a side note. I, I, I just don't want to put down the Sidewinder because it is a cool machine. But um, anyways, I was thinking about how I was going to talk about this in... Um, uh, in an episode, I was like, that's something we should discuss. You know, we should talk about this in an episode. So fast forward. So when was that? That was August that I bought the Sidewinder. Uh, and so fast forward like two weeks, I do this um, mastermind group quarterly in Toronto. So I'm in Toronto in early September. And um, this meeting is, it's not tattooers. It's just like uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, um, smart people. Like I'm super fortunate to be part of the group. Smart people, big time thinkers. They challenge everyone's ideas. It's not one of these places you can come in and spout some idea and everyone's like, oh, you sound like a smart guy. It's like a, uh, people challenge you, you know, and, and they expect you to challenge them. And uh, these are people who, they make big decisions. You know, they have, they run, some of them run multi-million dollar companies. Most, all of them have at least 10, 12 employees. Some of them have literally hundreds of employees. And so they're all there to kind of help each other get better and to challenge each other. And, um, and so I walk in and I sit down uh, and it's a full eight hour day and we have a, a like kind of a leader. We have a, a coach at the front of the room that's kind of guiding the day. And sure as shit, we sit down and the topic for the day is confidence. And this is like two weeks after this, this whole thought process I just went through with the Sidewinder. And I was like, holy crap, man, you guys really have me figured out. I've been like struggling with this idea um, on confidence. I just realized what an everyday issue it is for artists, for tattooers. It's something I don't think about that often. Um, and so, so um, of course, they're all tackling it from the aspect of being entrepreneurs, being business owners, being people that other people rely on to make the big decisions. And they have to be confident in their decision making. And so, uh, so they approached it from an entrepreneurial aspect, which is basically the same thing. I mean, we are entrepreneurs, we're tattooers, we make our own way, we make our own living. Um, you know, we have to adopt the same mindset that, you know, Elon Musk would adopt or that Jeff Bezos would adopt, whatever we're trying to like build our brand, uh, build our brand as a tattooer. So I'm going to be rude and turn around here. So we did, so they pass out, I mean, this was an eight hour day, so we did a lot of stuff, but this one thing stuck out to me and they called it the confidence system. And I would show you the worksheet, but I'm not allowed to. That's part of the deal with the strategic coach. Um, I can talk about it, but I can't show you the physical whatever stuff that we do, but I will run through it um, because I think it's a great, great exercise for developing confidence, uh, which is very, very important, I believe, to becoming a, a solid tattoo or a solid artist. So here's what we did first. We just listed, we had like five minutes to brainstorm on what gives us confidence. So the question is, what gives you confidence? And it could be anything. I mean, it's like, just close your eyes and go. What makes you feel sure of yourself? What makes you feel good? What makes you feel like you can conquer the rest of the day? Uh, and so, and you just fill as many, you know, like, you know, fill a full sheet of paper with it. Uh, I'll give you a few of mine just as an example. Um, for me, uh, I wrote uh, clarity, like knowing what to expect for the day, what my like order of operations is going to be, getting up in the morning and knowing what I have to deal with that day. Um, exercise, if I exercise early in the morning, it tends to get my, my brain going, gets my body feeling a little bit better. So I, 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 I like to exercise in the morning. Um, I, this is kind of a, a superficial sounding one, but having a lot of cash reserves for me, I, I depend on being able to seize opportunity, um, being kind of an entrepreneur I, and, and the more cash that I have in the bank, the easier it is for me to be able to take advantage of opportunities that come along. So the more money in the bank I have, the more confident I feel. Um, time with my family, my son, you know, we play basketball a lot, we play video games, and I feel, you know, with when I'm around him, I feel more confident, I feel like I'm doing a good job. Um, being rested, getting to bed a little earlier, um, and getting up earlier, I guess those are one and the same, but going to bed earlier and getting up earlier. If I'm the first one up in my house, I feel like I've got an advantage on the day. Uh, so th those are those are huge for me. Um, uh, uh, success stories from you guys. You know, when I read stuff on our YouTube page or I get emails or on our Instagram or whatever it is and people are saying that we're making a difference for them, that gives me confidence to move forward. Um, my clients, you know, if I have a, 
um, if, if I finish a full day tattoo session and someone stands up and they look at their like back piece in the mirror for the first time of the day, I want to see like excitement in their face. You know, it makes me feel great. It gives me like a, a pump, you know, like a, whatever I get, I feel great from watching people enjoy the work that, I, that I've done for them that day. So anyways, that, those are just some of my examples. So you, you write everything you can. The next question is take all that stuff and just pick 10. What are the top 10 confidence builders for you? So after you've written out 50 things that give you confidence, what are the top 10? And so mine are a lot of the things that I just told you, having a clarity or a clear plan for the day. One that I put down was having a solid team in place. I do a lot of stuff and, and I can't micromanage or control all of it, so I have to depend on other people to serve their role and I have to know that they're doing it really well and they're doing it better than I would do it. Uh, and so having a solid team in place makes me feel great. Um, uh, clear lines of communication, whether that's with my tattoo clients, with my uh, real estate, with my tenants and real estate, whatever it is. Um, I always have a clear line of communication. I like to feel like people trust me and they, uh, uh, and, and they feel comfortable telling me whatever they have to say. Um, like I said, uh, exercise, happy clients. Anyways, I, I listed my top 10, list your top 10. The next step from there um, are these kind of key questions. And the first one is, what confidence habits can you do every day? And so out of those 10 things that you wrote down, you might go like, okay, what can I do every day? Well, I can go to bed a little bit earlier every night. I could like set an alarm a little earlier every day. Um, I could engage with my, my team, engage with my family and develop those lines of communication early every morning and make sure that we're all on the same path for the day. Um, you know, and, and you just find those few things that you can do every single day. You can just kind of, kind of like work right into your routine. From there, the next question, which I really loved was what interferes with you being confident? And that was one that really struck me because it's like, oh, there are tons of things that interfere with me being confident. But on a day to day basis, like uncertainty, not knowing what to expect out of the day, not being very clear. That makes me feel timid, it makes me less confident, it makes me less willing to kind of voice my opinion. Um, negativity, I do find myself from time to time around people who kind of blame everyone else for their own shortcomings or they, um, uh, they always have something to complain about and that tends to drag me down. I don't do well with really negative people. Um, you know, uh, unhealthy habits, if I'm eating like McDonald's for lunch or if I'm drinking beer at three in the afternoon, I typically kind of dive for the day. And so those things uh, kind of interfere with me being confident. And then from there, um, then you go, I'll show you, give you a little flash. Uh, you go into um, an action plan, like what things can I do each day to, um, to develop my confidence and avoid those, uh, those situations that keep me from becoming confident. So it's, I mean, it sounds super simple and it is, it is super simple, but what I've found, I've been doing this for, so this is the end of September, I've been doing this for two full weeks. What I started doing that I feel like has really, really helped me uh, is, um, so I'm kind of a daytime tattooer. I tattoo, I started tattoo at noon, I finish by six or so, I'm home by like 6.45 or seven, we eat dinner. Used to, I would sit up and just like do whatever until midnight. I started taking like a melatonin at around 8.30 and just sitting back, I'll, I'll lay down in the bed and I'll read something, which inevitably ends up with me being asleep by like 9.15. And then I've been setting an alarm for 5 a.m. And I'm not typically an early morning person, but I'm setting an alarm for 5 a.m. So I'm up before the sun, I'm up before an hour before any of my family. And uh, I get up in the morning and the first thing that I do uh, is, is kind of like plan my day and decide what the biggest procrastination point is. Like, what is the one thing I don't want to do that day? And I go ahead and I get it out of the way. So a lot of times that is like answering an email that I don't want to like, a lot of times for me it's confrontational stuff because I deal with people and teams a lot. Um, you know, if I'm having to, I hate to say reprimand, but if I'm having to like correct someone or make a point that is contradictory to what they think, I try to get that stuff out of the way early. So if I need to send an email and clear something up, I will. If I need to deal with a team member that's not doing something up to my standards, I will. And something about getting that done first thing in the morning, like gives me this boost, this like testosterone injection where I just feel like, man, I can do anything from here for the rest of the day. I'm solid, here we go, let's go. 
And so I, I feel like I'm a better decision maker throughout the day. I feel like I have better like communication, better relationships. I feel like I tattoo better. I feel like my customers or my clients are more at ease and we're more engaged and having great conversations through the day. And my day just kind of flows right by. And then, you know, six o'clock rolls around, I finish tattooing and I do it all again. But it all comes from that, like getting to bed a little bit earlier, getting up super early, dealing with that one procrastination point, And then I go to the gym and I do whatever and my day takes off. And you know, maybe that's not what it is for you. Maybe you despise the idea of being up at 5 a.m. I know I always have, but, uh, but maybe that's not what it is for you. But the point is, taking the time to make that list, to, to, to like verbalize to yourself the things that actually give you confidence, uh, and then narrow those things down to things that you can do every single day, was just, it's just been a complete game changer for me. It's crazy what a huge impact such a simple couple of steps have taken. And, and back to, to how this reflects on tattooing, um, you know, I, I think that we all as, as artists or as people trying to draw better, trying to like make a living as creatives, it's got to be our biggest issue. I mean, it's, it's got to be like just, just, just getting up every day and saying, I'm good enough at this to feed my family. That takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of confidence. It takes a little bit of like tricking yourself. You know, we all go through those times where it's like, well, you know, for me, I get in front of this camera however often, you know, for technique episodes, or I sit down next to some of the great tattooers in the world and I ask questions and, and I'm constantly dealing with this voice in the back of my head that's like, oh, one day all these fireside followers are gonna realize you're a fraud. They're gonna realize you don't really know what the hell you're talking about, that you've just been like skating by this entire time and, 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 and you're a complete fraud. And we, we all deal with that, you know, whether it's you feeling like your clients are gonna know you don't know how to draw, or you don't know how to put in a solid line, or your peers, people that you tattoo next to are gonna figure out that you that you aren't any good, or that you know those those couple of great tattoos that you did were a complete fluke, and you can't ever make it happen again. You know, we all I think have that feeling, no matter what level we're at as as tattooers or as artists. You know, it's not just tattooers, but um, uh, and 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 I think just setting a handful of habits for yourself that put you in a positive mindset that give you that. Um, that like, I don't know, strength to get through the day to like make some good decisions and then you just build on it over and over and over. So anyways, uh, I feel like I just blew through all that information super fast. I'm talking like the micro machine man over here. But I, um, I'd love to, I'd love to see you guys try it. I'd love to see you just make that list narrow it down, try it for a couple of weeks and then give us some feedback because it's made like pretty tremendous impact on me in a pretty short period of time. So, you know, whether you comment in the section below, whether you email me directly, if you don't, it's not something you want to share with a bunch of people, you can send it to me at pluguglyart at gmail.com or you can send it to info at firesidetattoo.com, which everyone, all these guys will see it, but that's cool too. And um, uh, I'd love to hear if it's something that works for you. If you can like pin down two or three or four things that give you great confidence, two or three or four things that detract from that confidence and try to use that little bit of information to create uh, you know, a game plan to, to like attack the day with, with confidence and see if it doesn't make a difference in your tattooing and your drawing and your relationships, whatever. So um, anyways, I hope that helped. I think that um, it's made a huge difference for me. Going forward, um, we are, wh what news do I have to give? We don't know where we're gonna be in 2019. Here we are at the end of 2018. We've planned almost nothing for our travel schedule for 2019. Thinking about a couple of conventions. Um, I know we will be at Health City, Columbus, and probably Health City, Phoenix uh, next year, considering the Evergreen Convention. But if you wanna know where we're gonna be, so you can come up and give Scott Doney a hug, um, just go to firesidetattoo.com and you'll see a real annoying little pop-up that says, hey, join our mailing list. And then you can join the mailing list and then you'll stay up to date with where we are going and what we are doing. We try to stay on top of that. You'll also get notifications of new episodes and all that kind of thing. Um, uh, oh, we're starting a Find Your Style group soon. I know we have a long waiting list for a Find Your Style group. Uh, I was hoping to do those quarterly, but shit, they're a lot of work, man. There's so much work. Uh, and I just have been procrastinating on, on actually starting one. So we're gonna start one uh, later this fall. Uh, if, you're, if you don't know what Find Your Style is, I think you can click on a video at firesidetattoo.com that gives you an idea of what it's about. 
but it's basically a one-on-one -on -one kind of mentorship where we help you to develop your own mark making and and um, and, and find what you do that's really special that you can bring to your tattooing uh, to separate you from the rest of the dipshits at your tattoo shop. Uh, that's it. That's it. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting what we do. I feel like I've ignored this camera the whole time. Thank you guys, as always, for supporting what we do. And we will see you next time on the Fireside Tattoo Podcast. Thank you.